All right, folks, it's Jimmy here, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to another Voigtlander lens. Not long ago, I reviewed the Voigtlander 35mm f2 Ultron version 2, and that was a magnificent lens. And a lot of people seem to really enjoy that video. So I'm going to do a very similar one today with this little guy here, which is the Voigtlander 50mm f1.5 Nocton version 2. It's also an spherical lens, just like the Leica 50mm f1.4 spherical. So even though it's got a quite retro design, as we can see here, but it's definitely a modern lens underneath. So one of the reasons I want to talk about this lens is because people tend to overlook this little lens here because of the Voigtlander 50mm f2 Apple and the Voigtlander 50mm f1.2 Nocton. Well, to be clear here, I have to admit those two lenses are absolutely amazing. Especially the Voigtlander 50mm Apple is almost, I would say, 95% of the Leica Apple lens, except for its larger size and a little bit more of aberration in extreme conditions. I mean, there are direct comparison shots online that you can take a look. And I guarantee you, if you don't zoom in, you wouldn't be able to tell which one is which. When it comes to the 50mm 1.2, I've owned that lens before and I've talked about that lens briefly in my previous Leica ML 50mm sort of summary videos, so you can take a look at that. But today, we're going to focus on the 50mm f1.5 Nocturne version 2. So to start off, I really enjoyed this lens, so much so that I've already sold my 50mm f1.4 spherical from Leica, but that's also partly because I've got way too many 50mm lenses, but when I see that the Voigtlander Nocturne can deliver comparable results at a quarter of the cost, I have to let it go. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Leica 50mm f1.4 Simulux used to be my favorite 50mm lens. It's almost a perfect lens, except for one gripe for me, which is that even though wide open, that lens has really creamy and delicious bokeh, but when you step it down to f2 to f4, the bokeh kind of falls apart and especially you have lights in the background and the bokeh balls just becomes sort of really weird and, and has got this jiggly edge to it which I really don't like. But the Voidlander Nocturne is totally free of this problem. So that's one thing I really like about this lens. And other than that, I have to say that the Leica Simulux performs a little bit better in terms of sharpness both at infinity and at minimum focus distance and the Leica also has a little bit less distortion and definitely less vignette than the Voigtlander and in fact the biggest gripe about this Voigtlander lens right here is the vignette at 1.4 to I would say to even f 2.8 the vignette is very apparent especially wide open to some people it might be unbearable, but I tend to add vignette to my photos when shot wide open a lot of times, so it's not that big of a deal for me, but it might be a deal breaker for others. Alright, so in terms of the design of the lens, I don't think it's that good looking of a lens, but it's definitely really small. If we take the caps off, we can see that it's tiny. If we compare it to the Leica 50mm f2 here, if you look at them side by side, the Voigtlander f1.5 is even shorter, but the Summicron f2 is definitely thinner. I would say the size is pretty comparable, and the Voigtlander is even a little bit more compact, in a sense that it will require less space in your bag if you put it on your camera. Another lens I got here is the Leica Summilux Pre-Aspherical f1.4. But this is a black paint lens, so it's really, really expensive. It's almost eight times the price of the Voigtlander. But this is really more of a collector's item because of the black paint. The regular version, I think, goes for about the same as the Aspherical in the used market. And even the Leica Summicron F2 is twice the price of this 1.5 here. We will do a direct comparison among all these three lenses later on. 
But before we go into that, let's take a look at an online review article here. So this article on 47 degrees is a really comprehensive review of 10 Leica M mount 50mm lenses. It's got four parts and, and each part is like a full length research article. But we're gonna just look at the chart here. So if we look at the Voilander Nocturne versus the Leica Simulux, we'll find that the main advantage of the Voilander is actually flare resistance and chromatic aberration. Now, I have to slightly disagree with these two points here as I found the flare resistance of the Leica it's definitely not a one star but I mean there are sample variations even among Leica lenses so maybe he's got a worse copy than mine but I would definitely give it a two to three stars and as for the Voilander I overall quite agree with the ratings here but I would say the vignette is probably one star for me because it's really that bad so the final score here for me would probably be a 51 to a 47. But if you look at the overall chart here, I think there is a big problem, which is that when he calculates the final score, he weighs each criteria equally, which I don't think is the best way to do it. But I mean, it might be different depending on who you are. For example, there are people who cares more about the sharpness of the lens rather than chromatic aberration. And there are people who cares about distortion, especially if you're shooting architectures. So there's really not a best way to calculate the final score. But other than that, I think this whole review is really accurate, quite detailed, and, and you might want to take a look at it if you're interested in any of these lenses. All right, so next up, I'm going to compare this Voilander 50mm 1.5 Nocturne version 2 against the Leica Summicron 50mm f2 and the Leica Summilux f1.4 pre asparagal and let's see how it fares. First of all, let's take a look at the performance of these three lenses at infinity. Wide open, we can clearly tell that the vignette on the Voigtlander Nocturne 2 is much more apparent, especially if you take a closer look at the buildings in the bottom left corner of the image. Now, if we zoom into the center of the image, I think both of these lenses are tech sharp, where the Voilander has an upper hand in contrast. If we move to the edge of the frame, this is where the aspherical design on the Voilander really shines, because the Simulux here is quite mushy to be honest, while the Voilander is still crystal clear. Stop down to F2, the vignette on the Simulux has really improved, while we can still see dark corners in the Nocturne version 2. And also, the Voilander is a little bit cooler than the Summilux. Now, if we zoom into the center of the image, except for some color temperature difference, I think they're pretty much on par with each other. The Voilander still performs much better in the corner, except that the heavy vignette here makes the whole scene a lot darker. Now let's take a look at how the Summicron performs against the Nocturne at F2. I have to say that the vignette in the Voilander really started to bother me. Now if we zoom into the center of the image, we can tell that the performance of these two lenses are pretty much neck on neck. Moving to the edge of the frame, I think both of these two lenses perform much better than the Summilux. And again, the vignette in the Voilander is much more apparent. Okay, let's moving on to the performance and minimum focus distance of these three lenses. If we take a look at these two pictures, even without zooming in, we can really appreciate the beautiful bokeh ball in the Summilux. The center sharpness of these two lenses are pretty much the same as we've seen in the previous comparison. Now, if we move to the edge of the frame, we find that the Voilander clearly performs much better. Especially if you take a look at the rear wheel of this yellow car, the details are much more apparent on the right hand side picture. Stopping down to F2, let's see what we can find. Alright, zooming into the center of the image, I think it's pretty much the same story with both of these two lenses perform equally good. And if we move to the edge of the frame, the Voilander is again quite a bit sharper and the Simulux here still is a little bit mushy. Now we can tell that the characteristics of the Simulux is really just like a vintage Noctilux where the sharpness falloff is really quick. 
Moving on to the Summicron and set both lenses at f2. Zooming in, I have to say that I'm not a big fan of the Voigtlander rendering of the background here. But the Summicron's bokeh is even worse. It's got clearly defined outlines in the bokeh balls, which I'm not a big fan of. Now this is where the Summicron really surprised me, because I think its edge performance is actually better. Even though it's not an aspherical design, and the lens is well over 40 years old, I can't believe it actually surpasses the Voigtlander in terms of sharpness here. Alright, the next part we are going to measure is flare resistance performance. Now, these are some pretty extreme conditions where I set the lens wide open and shoot directly into the sun. The Noctown performed so much better because of its modern coating technology and the Simulux can't hold a candle against it. Now in this three-way comparison, I set all lenses to f2 and the Noctown is clearly the winner here. The Summicron performed the worst with a big halo and very apparent drop in contrast. The Simulux ends up in the middle ground here. Now let's take a look at color fringing and chromatic aberration of these three lenses. These shots were taken under bright sunlight at a stainless steel fence near a swimming pool. And judging from the green tealish outline in the Simulux shot, we can definitely tell that it's got more fringing and aberration going on. Now stop down to f2 and compared to the Summicron, I can't stop but admiring the Summicron here. It's got a 40 plus year old lens design and can still hold its own. No wonder Leica is still producing this lens today. Alright finally, we're drawing some conclusions here. The Voigtlander has got way better flare resistance than any of the Leica lenses in this comparison. It's also got the worst vignette by far. And it's a little bit sharper than the Summilux wide open, especially in the edge and corners. Now, the Summicron is a winner here. Being a 40 plus year old lens, it still performs pretty darn well. Except maybe for the bokeh which I'm not a big fan of, but other than that, I got positively surprised. And the biggest advantage to the Simulux, I think, is the dreamy and beautiful out of focus rendering. Alright, so the vignette is really the most standout thing in this comparison. And I think the bottom line here is that, except for the vignette, this lens performs exceptionally well. And if you're like me, who prefers smaller lenses, doesn't have that deep of a pocket, I think this Voigtlander is a wonderful choice, no question at all, provided that you can bear with that heavy vignette wide open. But if you can't stand that vignette and you want the absolute best optical performance, then I would highly suggest you go and check out the Voigtlander 50mm f2 Apple lens. Going forward, I will use this lens to take more pictures, just like what I did with the 35mm Ultron f2, so you can see more real life performance with this lens. And I'm really looking forward to it as well. If you like today's contents, please give me a thumb up. And if you want to see more contents like this, please, please do consider subscribing to my channel because your support is really important for me. And don't forget to share this video to your friends so that more people get to watch this. Alright, that's it for today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.